Happy, happy Friday and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing with me, Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Are we live? I don't know if we're live. We're live now. No, we yeah. are live now. There we are. Sorry, we're I wasn't live. getting I thought I was going to have to interrupt your intro there because I wasn't getting the little notification. But a man, of, I shouldn't have doubted you, Derek. Yeah, I'm good. I was saying I had a bit of a late night. I was at my, my brother's gig last night, which was good fun uh, at Oran Moor. Um, so a bit bleary-eyed, but looking forward to the return of football tomorrow. Early kickoff, can't beat it. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Um, if you want to uh, get involved with the, the, the programme, as ever, folks, it's very much uh, appreciated and encouraged. Get your points across. Uh, and just a reminder, as you can see the little ticker below, we've got that tremendous offer on the website just now. Just £1 for two months worth of content. And Josh has fired the link in the comment section. Uh, so click on that and you can take advantage of it. Uh, loads of you doing so, actually. So thanks very much for um, for subscribing uh, and we're hearing great things. There's loads on there on the website this morning. Um, notably, uh, an interview I did with uh, James Bisgrove, um, the commercial director at Rangers. Fair to say there's a, a fair few points that the supporters uh, feeling slightly aggrieved at Joshua with regards to uh, off-the-field issues at Rangers. Yeah. I put a number of points to him. Uh, my Jers is certainly one that whenever I speak to supporters, there are, there are uh, concerns and gripes with regards to that is is a, been a lot of fans feel that it's not fair. They've got no chance of getting away tickets, um, and it favours uh, just a small tier in the gold tier section. I put that to James Bisgrove, uh, and he did answer it. He says it, it, it's, it's it's difficult to strike the balance between demand and supply. He says for a domestic away game. He told me they'll be getting up to 25,000 applications for uh, one or 2,000 tickets. So he says it's, um, it's they're, they're up against it in terms of uh, making sure that everyone gets a ticket, of course, because the demand outstrips uh, supply. Um, but he says it's not perfect. Um, he says, he, he's, but he does say that he's got absolute confidence that he's shaped with supporter influence right at its very core. Uh, I asked him, I pushed him in Champions the Champions League ticket pricing. I know that a lot of supporters felt it was too expensive. Um, and also the payment structure, the fact that, that, that supporters weren't able to stagger their payments. I was receiving a number of messages from fans asking why that wasn't uh, available. He yeah. said that they, they wanted that option to be available, um, but their ticketing, ticketing provider weren't able to fulfill that request from the the club. Uh, they said they were really dis disappointed with that. And as a result of that, uh, they've now gone to the market to tender for a new online ticketing platform um, to make it uh, much better for, for supporters. Um, he says that we see too many instances of supporter frustrations with that experience. Uh, and this is just another symptom of that. So he, he told me there is positive change coming there. Uh, it's added that we've been under a, a long-term contract, which is why it's taken longer than any of us would have liked. Uh, on the pricing itself, he says that was debated right across the club's boards, the executive team and the investor board discussed the pricing. Um, but he did admit that uh, from the feedback they've got uh, as a point of learning, um, because he said, that he said uh, I'll, I'll quote him here, I accept and acknowledge that for many supporters, that balance was tipped the wrong way. Uh, there are things that I hope we can do in the future that will address that. Um, so he mentioned, and obviously, the price of the tickets. He said that families are buying, mum and dad are buying a ticket for two children, and that's having a material impact on people's budgets. Um, so that the decision was taken, that obviously, to tear the pricing from £150. Uh, it says the pricing of, obviously, the tickets around 150 uh, to 180 Um So that's something that he got a lot of feedback, and a lot of fans, of course, said that it was uh, too expensive, the Champions League ticket pricing. Um, it did say, of course, that the ticketing website has been upgraded uh, to make it more user-friendly, which is uh, positive news, because uh, you lose count of the amount of... Uh, the amount of time supporters um, mentioned that they're, they're frustrated with just how fidgety it is and uh, how sort of uh, uh, out of date, if you like, the, the whole website uh, is, but that, that has been upgraded. Um, ticket office as well, they've got a, a new team in there. Um, he said that they've, they've uh, appointed 
uh, a customer services uh, manager there, David uh, Milburn, um, less than a year ago, uh, and they're revamping that. He has a team of six answering between fifteen to 20,000 inquiries per month, and he told me 80% of those have been answered within one day. Um, and he also said that uh, supporters liaison officer Greg Marshall uh, has put on a number of drop-in clinics within our fan hub at the stadium for supporters that would rather have service face-to-face -face and need a little bit of extra help. Um, and he said we've tried to open the ticket office outside of match days uh, as well. Uh, he also touched on Castor. Now, uh, it's, uh, in the news again this morning, Joshua, the, the fourth strip. Uh, now, the, the reaction... Say, Derek, the, the best tweet of the day, perhaps the week, goes to our friend Adam Thornton. I'm just going to read it out because it said... Was it breaking the lines or something the kit... Uh, the kit oh, said, yeah. <laughs> Rather break the Adam lines. said something along the lines I've got up here. If we only could break the lines on the pitch instead, that would be class. So I think yeah. that that is, sums up a lot of a lot of feelings. A nice line breaking pass there would be more welcome than a line breaking kit. Yeah, yeah. So it's fair to say the reaction has been uh, a tad negative with regard to the the. The launch of that kit this morning, but he touched on Castor. Uh, I said, of course, that, that I mean the quality control is an issue that um, uh, hasn't gone away since they were appointed as the kit suppliers. Uh, he said they were aware of that. He said imperfections, given the volumes that, that they're selling, three to four thousand, but sorry, hundred thousand kits exist and have existed. He says he's assured that whenever they, they're flagged up, they're quick to react and address them. He added that it's worth around seven million pounds a year to the club that Castor uh, partnership, uh, and he did say uh, it's one that, that they're happy with. He also touched on Sportum on Go, folks, um, and, uh, and the lessons that can be learned from entering that partnership. And he also mentioned New Edinston House. He gave us an update uh, on that um, and, uh, and when that's likely to open, which Touchwood uh, will be for the Old Firm Clash on the 2nd of January. So uh, fingers crossed that that is the case. Um, and the museum uh, will be open slightly later just uh, because it's, um, it, it said it's quite intricate, some of the technology and some of the casing in the different rooms, that's likely to open uh, more likely around March time. So um, loads in there, folks. Um, go and check out uh, the, the interview on the website, rangersreview.co.uk. Uh, Josh has put in the link in the comments section. A um, lot of concerns, of course, being raised by, by supporters, uh, and we've put that to... Uh, James Bisgrove and he's uh, uh, attempted to uh, answer it as, as best he can so go, do go check it out um, but on the field Joshua it's uh, the end of the international break hallelujah I'm absolutely delighted I've got to say uh, and we're getting back into domestic matters tomorrow they, they don't cut much bigger than a trip to the capital um, to take on the Hearts a Hearts team that will Let's be honest, fancy their chances of taking on Rangers um, tomorrow. Um, given that Rangers have struggled, uh, you have to say, in domestic, uh, in the league uh, of late. I know they're just sitting two points behind Celtic. Um, but in terms of performance levels, especially away, uh, they have found it difficult on their travels. Um, how are you feeling heading, in, heading into this one uh, tomorrow, Josh? Are you confident they can come back down the M8 with all three points? Uh, I mean, um, I don't know. I think the key thing is that, you know, it's only two points and Celtic slipped up just for, before the international break, which makes the picture a lot more appealing for Rangers. Um, but as we've kind of said throughout this week, I don't think it's an example of Rangers clawing it back. If Rangers were to go and go top for however long, um, because it's the early kickoff tomorrow, then that's an example of putting pressure on and taking the initiative. And you've absolutely got to, James Tavenier noticed in the, the Rangers TV interview, I think it was yesterday, the day before, said, um, was speaking about obviously the importance um, of, of, of three points. And it's a non-negotiable win for me, Derek, because not only because, you know, if Rangers weren't to win, it's not that the points total is, um, you know, unattainable to, to, to catch up. But if you look, I think, at the, the kind of trends from the open and seven league games, Rangers need to, if they want to be champions, you can only rely on yourself um, and you need to go and win games like this, take the initiative and go top. So looking forward to it because games at Tyne Castle are always, um, you know, the, no, normally a good game. Obviously, the last one under Van Bronckhorst was that 2-0 game, a bit of a strange one. Al McGregor had a, a really good afternoon after Joe Rebo and, and Morels had put Rangers up front. But I think lots of... Um, 
there's going to be lots of interest in the team. Um, is someone like Ben Davies going to play, given that he's now spent two weeks, presumably, at the Rangers training centre? Uh, in the international break, do you start Morelos up front? And um, what do you do with the right wing? Um, so many questions which we can get stuck into, but but really looking forward to it. And you know, as I say, I think Rangers have been given it somewhat of a of a lifeline because they've had such a heavy old firm defeat. They've dropped points now to only be two points. You need to go and seize the initiative and and, and go top. I think that's yeah, a non-negotiable. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's. A, I know it's early in the season. We're just entering October uh, tomorrow. Um, but I think if Rangers were able to go top of the league um, tomorrow, albeit momentarily, I think it, it would alleviate a number of supporter concerns. They need to start winning at home. Uh, sorry, winning away, Joshua. That, yeah. that 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 is becoming almost a thing. Uh, I know the record isn't that great away from home. How would you like Rangers to start the game tomorrow? I, I think Hearts... Quickly, would... Derek. I'd like them to start quickly and not, <laughs> yeah. not walk through the first 20 minutes. I mean, there's, there's something... We'll do a piece on it at one point, but... I was looking at the the sequences, the the highest kind of chance quality sequences uh, in the league this season, and, and within the top twelve, I think like two were in the opening half hour. Um, and again, we were talking about this yesterday. It's different, I guess, away from home at Tynecastle. It is maybe more of a game where they're going to fancy their chances. They're going to go out to probably win, try and win that game tomorrow. So the space would be more forthcoming. But too often in those opening seven games for me, Rangers, I think their desire for for control just means that. Opposition teams who want to, you know, keep it uh, level as long as possible, it makes it a little bit easier for them. It plays into their hands too much as opposed to going and, you know, going a goal ahead. Because if you go a goal ahead early, you completely disrupt the game plan of, of the team that's, that's playing to frustrate you in whatever manner uh, they're, they're seeking to do that. So I think you got to start quickly. People need to see a, a, a much improved level of performance um, from, from before the international break. Dundee United, they got the win, but I thought it was another kind of laborious game where... It wasn't that entertaining. Um, there wasn't enough goal scorers on the pitch. Um, you need to use this international break as, as something of, of a break from that um, to, to, to kind of refresh it. we will be intrigued to see what happens with the team. Um, as someone like, as I say, Matondo and Davies, are they going to start? Um, again, if not now, when? I guess that can keep supplying. But I think Van Bronckhorst football has often looked at its best domestically with, with two wingers. Uh, alternatively, is he going to play Tillman and Lawrence? If he doesn't play Matondo off the right, who does he play off the right? I don't think we'll see Cholak and Morelos, but yeah, you, you know, I guess you're looking at um, what the options are because it's not been a, a blistering start in the league. So, yeah, look, look, looking forward to the, the, the away record as well. You're right, it hasn't been great. And Rangers, although they, they played well for kind of 20 minutes in that Tyne Castle game, if you remember and look back at the chances, it, it was quite an even game. And, and obviously since then, the away from home Rangers haven't been brilliant. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. We can get into our teams in a minute. But you've also got John McLaughlin, Al McGregor, who starts. Um, oh, this, oh, it's not going away, this, is it? No, and that's that's what we've spoken about consistently. That's that's an issue because you've got, again, one who's a better shot stopper, one who, in my opinion, gives you a better... You know, he's play plays out from the back better, commands his box better, but isn't as good a shot stopper. So when you don't have that in one, then you're gonna have that argument back and forth. And because McGregor was playing when McLaughlin was injured prior to the the break, then I guess um yeah, there's a decision to be made, isn't there? There certainly is. So many comments come in, folks. Uh, I want to uh, touch on, on, on a few of these. Uh, Gordon Rowe gets in touch. I'm not too sure if he's, he's tuned in before, but he says uh, Modern Troops just back from the Congo uh, wow. looking for a big result. Uh, the Mora, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, never been there, but um, yep, uh, the Democratic Republic of, of Congo, someplace um, over there. Uh, good to have your, your company. Um, other questions, uh, well, other points coming in here. Uh, Andrew Webster says, uh, hi, guys, new subscriber, loving the content. Uh, wondering your thoughts on all the contracts up at the end of the season, whether we should move on from Ross Wilson now, given how massive uh, the window is. Um, yeah, I think that's maybe a, a conversation for another time, uh, Joshua, but uh, there is, I think, uh, done a piece uh, prior to the international break of the amount of players that are out of contract in the summer. Um, I think there's 12 all in. Uh, now, the big one, the, 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 the notable ones is Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morelos. As things mm -hmm. stand, no movement on whether they're going to sign new deals. Uh, I've sort of resigned myself to the fact that they'll move on for nothing, they're able to sign pre-contracts in January. Um, but uh, I think I've mentioned before, there's going to have to be a, 
big upheaval starting in January for me. Uh, this Rangers side needs revamped. I'm looking at that midfield, and even the ones he likes, uh, it needs totally. Uh, I thought that maybe the summertime last summer would, would be the opportunity to refresh it and revamp it, but uh, the, the, the extensions to the likes of Arfield and Davis just pushed it down the line somewhat a little bit, but you'd imagine those two maybe moving on next summer. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's up to Ross Wilson. Is he the man to uh, to, to revamp that? I know there's the jury's out on after a couple of dubious windows as well, but uh, there's going to be some uh, serious surgery that has to be taking place. Yeah, I, I think the next month... Um... And, and we can look a bit more in detail, you know, hearts tomorrow in the game. We've got some uh, some graphs to look at that. But the next month before the World Cup is obviously big for a number of reasons. But one of which is the new signing, some of which the money that's been spent on Matondo, Davies and Neomaz, as we've discussed already, Derek, it's all fine and well saying players will take time to bed in. Um, and that's fine. I think this is a different discussion from writing players off. It's wanting to see players, you know, having an involvement in the first team when, as you say, the team that started against Napoli, the majority of them have been here for four years plus. That that needs refreshed. Domestically yeah. as well, that needs refreshed. And I think you need to see, um, supporters want to see a long-term vision and and say, okay, what is, you know, what is this going to look like at the end of the season? From the Napoli team, what, seven players maybe out of contract at the end of the season when you take McGregor, Davis, Arfield, Jack, uh, Morelos, Ken. Um, a couple others have, have, have probably forgot. Um, so you need to see these players for me come in and refresh the squad and make an impact. Obviously, Lawrence was doing that. Tillman was doing that, that at the start. I think it's imperative that you get both of them back in. We wrote a piece on the website last week just looking at their numbers. Things like touches in the, the opposition box, their expected goals per 90, and it's just so much higher than any other midfielder. And obviously, that gives you a, a, a greater goal threat, uh, particularly when you're not getting the goal threat from out wide. I'm, I'm going to pull up just now the... This is the, the expected goals difference table there. Wow, that that uh, can you, can you see go. that okay, folks? Yeah, what Josh has uh, pulled up there, let us know. Hopefully you can see that. You don't need to look at the numbers so much, but what you're looking at is the teams at the side, of Celtic at the top, Rangers, Hibs, Motherwell, Hearts. What this is, is it takes, we speak about expected goals a lot, the chances that teams are creating, the chances that teams are conceding, and it averages it out per 90, and, and Rangers are far behind Celtic at the moment. And when we're talking about the need to create more chances, that needs to be, I think, more material over the course of a season to to um, to, to to win the league title, um, and that's why I think after seven games it might only be two points. But I think on the basis of performances, Rangers still have a lot, uh, plenty to be desired. And you can see Hearts, are, Hearts are third in the table there, but fifth um, in the expected goal difference table. So maybe a slight um, overperformance. Um, they've obviously got Craig Gordon as well, who they can rely on in moments of trouble if they're uh, you know conceding a lot of yeah, chances top, as they did against Motherwell. Yeah, uh, I like some of the comments came in there, Joshua. Uh, uh, Aldo says he can see it, but he has no clue what it is. Well, I explained it well enough. Both CGM55 five. says uh, Joshua loves a graph, and I love this from uh, McCluskey. Stats bomb, stats bomb, you're my stats bomb. That's Very it. Inventive. It's one word, so apart from that, he's got it right. right I'm going to give you a couple more then, Derek, while we're at it. This is, um, and again, don't panic at the start. I'm going to explain it to you. This is called a tree map, okay? So basically, the bigger the player the more influence they have in the goal scoring um, likelihood and the goal creation likelihood. What it's showing you is whose heart's most important players going forward. No surprise, Lauren Shankland, Alan, Alan Forrest, who's um, you know come on to quite a game since moving to Livingston from Ayr and then to Hearts and then Barry Mackay as well. So Shankland's got four goals already, Barry Mackay two, Alan Forrest three. Um, hearts are one of the most the, 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 the most direct teams when it comes to quick attacks in, in the Premiership. Um, they've taken the second highest number of dribbles per 90. I think they'll be quite direct. I think they'll try to hit Rangers with pace. Um, and I think that might suit Rangers because they're better when they have to play into space um, and, and aren't restricted to breaking down a defence. So we'll leave those graphs for now, Derek. I've got a couple more Rangers ones we can pull up at, at the end. But that just gives you a little bit of a context, backing up the eye test, who are hearts most dangerous attacking players. And Shanklin, for them, I think, started really well. And um, when he's been given those chances, I know he played for Dundee United, he didn't do brilliantly a couple of seasons ago, but he's now playing in a team that it gives him more chances. And, and um, so far, he's, he's repaid that. Yeah, uh, Stephen Gillespie says, uh, not even any trees on it, uh, Josh. <laughs> um, so he, he's looking for more foliage there, more, more trees. <laughs> uh, CDM55 says, a tree, what, what was it called? A tree graph? Tree, tree, a tree map, tree graph, whatever you tree, want. Tree map. Yeah. Uh, and Al, Al McConnell says uh, 
we should have taken a punt on Shankland. Uh, he's certainly a player that was uh, doing the rounds uh, previously, Joshua. Uh, before we touch on what, what we expect, uh, what what our predicted lineups will be at Tyne Castle, would he be someone that, that, that you would have liked to have seen at Ibrox? Uh, I, I don't know. I think... Um... Maybe I, I'm sure he'd score a, a few goals. Yeah. I don't again. I don't think it's a. I don't think if he'd signed um, Shankland, that there'd been a something that would have supporters would have been that ex- excited about. And that's not to discredit him, but just because, as yeah. I say, is it just because I, I think the expectation of, of new you want to maybe sign players with a sell on value who are quite young. That's normally the model that Rangers try to go for, um, and they, they signed Cholak as well, who obviously kind of fills that void. Um, we also have. You know, as we discussed yesterday, maybe a Kima roof return, given that teaser he put on Instagram. But um, you know, who knows that'll that'll uh, how how long that'll go on for? Yeah. Uh, goodbye to Graham, who's having to take a, a conference call there. But good to have your company uh, as ever. Uh, McCloskey says Cholak is better than Shankland. Totally agree. Uh, and CGM fifty five says every day is a school day watching the Rangers review. There you are, Joshua. You're educating people uh, on the morning briefing. So uh, fantastic right. stuff. Um, lots of questions coming in here uh, with regards to the team. Now, Sean Martin says, uh, Derek, do you know if Tom Lawrence is fit for tomorrow? Hopefully he is. Uh, we'll get an update from the manager when we speak to him this afternoon. Um, uh, I'll get an injury update on him uh, and on the other players as well, Sean. But um he did mention after the Dundee United game that uh, he's hopefully be back after the international break. So, fingers crossed he's in that match day squad tomorrow because I think he, he's been a big miss for Rangers since he's been out. Uh, um, he's, I think he's been a top top signing uh, in the summer, and I think Rangers certainly Rangers certainly miss him when he's not there, don't they, Joshua? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, again, an- another piece we did over the the break focused on Tom Lawrence, um, looking at. What, what he gives you and what's different in that area. We spoke about when he came in that uh, he was a player that fitted Van Bronckhorst more kind of direct, um, I guess, midfield style in terms of forward runs, getting into the box, arriving, doing the simple things um, offensively that a player like Jack or Kamara doesn't come naturally to them. They're players who want to come towards the ball and keep the ball. And Lawrence is someone that, that wants to score and create. That's what comes more naturally to him. And I think often, it's, you know, Stats aside, it's as simple as that. As a player, you're playing a player in his preferred position with his preferred responsibilities. And, um, you know, the header away at Hibs is a great example. What other Rangers midfielder scores that? Maybe Arfield makes that run. I can't think of many headers he scored. Um, but but yeah, that's but yeah. to get into the, the box, make a second striker support run, increase the numbers in the box. Van Bronckhorst seems seemed relatively hopeful. Um, before the international break, he, he certainly didn't dismiss the idea, but obviously we'll get um, an update later today, um, which will determine if he is indeed uh, going to be going to be playing tomorrow. I think um, if, if he was, that would be a huge boost. I'd like to see him. I'd like to see uh, Tillman as well, straight back in that midfield. And um, whether it be both of them ahead of Lundstrom, um, I don't know if that's too offensive. Maybe a Jack uh, in, in, in there next to him. Um, I get that. Will, will Rangers opt for someone on the right, or will they kind of play that tucked in formation that they've done so far? I, I, I don't like seeing Tillman out there. I'd rather see him in his preferred position. I think he's a player of such talent, and he's not had a, a couple of great games, but um, you know he had such a good start for a reason, and he's still only played, as we keep mentioning, I think under twenty professional games, so he's yeah. only going to improve. He's a baby in terms of. Uh... His career, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Heather gets in touch. She says, uh, if my maths teacher at school was more like Joshua, I might have paid more attention. So I was a... terrible at maths. I was absolutely terrible at maths. That's all. Yeah. Just when it just when it's football related, I can I can concentrate on it. You know. Uh, um, I, I like yeah, I like the like the tweets that I've seen a lot uh, uh, recently with regards to. Uh, uh, politics <laughs> and things like that, just main news stories and and folk tweeting. And what does it mean in football terms? Yeah, um, so I'm a big fan, big fan of those tweets. Um, so yeah, if it was more football related maths, then I think I would have done better uh, as well. Um, okay, let's talk a, about a predicted lineups, Joshua. Um, we'll have this piece on the website later, folks. Uh, this afternoon, um, there was a lot of debate coming in uh, earlier on in the chat with regards to who starts in goal. Well, wow, oh God, we're, we're in up. We're, just say it, Derek. You want Al McGregor and goals? Just say it. Yeah, listen. I, I was a, a John McLaughlin. Uh, <laughs> I was shouting his case at the start of the season. Deserves a chance. Um, 
Parkhead happened, uh, and then of course it, Ajax. I don't, I don't think he was at fault for any of the goals uh, in Amsterdam. Um, however, he got that injury. Of course, Alan McGregor came in uh, against Napoli, saved those two penalties. Pretty much had a heroic performance. You, you've got to say, uh, and then of course he played against uh, Dundee United. I would uh, play Alan McGregor. I, I've got to say, Joshua, um, I'm, I'm, I'm now backing McGregor to start between the sticks, but you're opting for John McLaughlin. Yeah, I am. Um, again, we probably, as we said a, a few minutes ago, it's a debate that you shouldn't have to have. I think it's probably something that, well, McLaughlin's had one terrible game. Um, and although that game was so terrible, um, that is a bit of a, a, a one-off so far. That I guess that's what you'd say from an optimistic point of view. I don't think he's cost Rangers many other goals and Alan McGregor did last season. Um, he's also saved two uh, two penalties brilliantly against Napoli. Um, that's not to disclude that point. I think McLaughlin just gives you so much more, um, again, with the ball at his feet, um, if Hearts come and press Rangers high, I think you see how, how well they look after it. And that makes such a big difference because if you can play out under pressure, um, and you, you're able to create space higher at the pitch. So I, I, I'd go with McLaughlin. Um, if McLaughlin was to, to have a couple more clangers and his, his shot stopping was to be exposed as it was at Parkhead, then I think you've got to ask, you know, you are in a really difficult position where you've got, as we've said, one keeper who's good at one thing and one keeper who's good um, at, at another. If he was to start McGregor tomorrow, I think that'd be quite a big statement. Um, unless McLaughlin's still injured, which he could be because he wasn't in the Scotland squad, was he? So we actually won't know that until uh, this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we disagree on the goalkeeper. Uh, the back four, I think it's going to be the same as we've seen for much of the season. Tavnier Goldson, I think Sands will play and uh, Barisic. But you've got one alteration to that back four. Yeah. I mean, you know me, I'm a big James Sands fan. Um, I thought he struggled um, a little bit. I think I thought he saw against the, the red card against Napoli a little bit. Um, that it's just the, the recovery pace that Bassi has was such a cheat code, wasn't it? Um, I, and I don't know whether Sands will... I don't know whether Van Bronckhorst will use this opportunity to move Sands up into midfield. Now, I know he's not going to be a, necessarily... A, maybe not in this game. He's not going to be a line-breaking a passer all the time but the the example of I think how he can be quite useful in a game away from home was was the Dundee game in the cup last season um you know that kind of Ryan Jack role deeper in the pitch again Rangers maybe don't need that at the moment they need more numbers in the box um like we've just spoken about uh their attacking numbers um but not, nonetheless Sands is gonna you know given his age how much he's played so far he is gonna play games this season so I just wonder whether he'll play a little bit higher at points or maybe be used as a rotational option for, for Lundstrom. I, I think it might be Ben Davies tomorrow because again, if not, if not when, if not now when. There we go. I can't I'm, these sayings, I need to stop saying them because I never get the, the cliches. It's right. a good it's a good point on, on on Ben Davis. I think um a lot of fans are, are want to see him in action. He's had a, a, a period of time off, a substantial period of time off. We'll get an update on him as I mentioned later on, folks. Um he also can't play against Liverpool Suns, which I'm being reminded by. Yeah, now. I've seen that comment come yeah. in, CGM55. That's a, that's a good uh, good comment in there. So um, I don't know if that would alter Van Bronckhorst's thinking. Um, but, but would he have one eye on Anfield? I'm not too sure he would have, to be honest. Well, I, but then you can't. The thing is, maybe it's maybe Leon King plays tomorrow. I mean, again, we wrote about him in the international break. Um, 18 years old, and I think he's done really well. He's not played like a player who hasn't played much competitive football. He's yet to have maybe a big test, like a time castle away, or I think that'll be quite a, quite a big ask as it stands. You, you, you've spent that money on Ben Davies. You've got to play him, I think, and you've got to play him at Anfield. He's, you know, he, he was back in the match day squad before the international break. Yes, maybe match fitness. I, I don't know how much that comes into specific situations. I, I think he needs to play. Um, he gives you that balance with his left foot as well. Um, and because Sands is suspended for Liverpool, I don't think he probably plays a away at time castle. Friend of the show, Jim, is not having it, Joshua. He says, uh, maybe I've had too much sun, Josh, but did you really drop sands? Uh, no, he's, he, he... <laughs> maybe I was just I was just moving up into the midfield, Jim. Um, but the, I, I I think that sands, um, the, the, the team hasn't been in good form. And when you have 
a player coming and playing in a position that maybe isn't their most natural, although I think he can play at centre back like a Tillman. I think it can, you know, a player's environment is so important to them. If if Tillman had, you know, a good team playing around him um and was playing in his favourite position as opposed to, you know, at the end of an old firm Mullering, which obviously he's a part of, but out in an unfamiliar position on the right. I just think context is so important and Sands, I think, has has done uh, relatively well and um, we've obviously spoken a lot about what he gives you on the ball, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the the truth is that Davies has been brought in for a lot of money, um, you know, comparatively to what Rangers have spent in previous summers to partner Goldson um, long term at the back. I don't think anyone can suggest that he's not based on the fee, the age, what he said when he came in. Um, he's coming into the prime of his career. He's not played a lot of football um, in the last well, I know he's on loan, but not not loads of football in the last couple of years. Um, so I, I, because Sands, I think um, I, I think for example, Liverpool away could be a great game to play Sands and Munstrom um, in the middle uh, because of what they'd give you off the ball um, in the middle of the park. But whether that'll happen, um, I, I, I don't know because the manager obviously likes him because the amount he's played them so far. Um, but yeah, D- Davies, I think you've got to get him, and I'd, I'd be very surprised. But, but would I be very surprised? I think he has to play tomorrow because you've got to play him against Liverpool. That's that's maybe a better way of putting it. Mm, yeah, interesting. Okay, uh, midfield. Um, I think John Lundstrom's a shoe in. He's he's one of the first names in the team sheet. Uh, and for me, it's uh, do you play uh, three defensive midfielders? I think he's going to play two. I think it's going to be Lundstrom. Uh, and depending if Ryan Jack is fit enough, uh, I know he played for Scotland in midweek. Um, if he is fit, Joshua, I, I would be inclined to play uh, Jack and Lundstrom as my two sort of holding midfield pair. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think that I, I'm still undecided, Derek, um, because either I think what they'll do is, obviously it very much depends on personnel. So we could, you know, Lawrence could not be available and that kind of disrupts the whole argument. Yeah. I, I, th- I think Rangers' best performances have kind of come when they've played that um, Tillman and Lawrence and Lundstrom and Jack almost as like a midfield box um, and, and what I mean by that is that they're not playing a right winger, I don't think it's ideal playing Lawrence or Tillman off the right but what's the option at the moment, unless you go and play Matondo there, we've spoken about maybe playing Kent over on the right to kind of change it up, put him in a, a position he played under Gerrard and play Matondo on the left wing I kind of feel that Van Bronckhorst his best domestic football, as I've said, has come with those two wingers because I think they inject pace naturally into your attack because they want to play 1v1. Um, they balance out the threat on either side, whereas at the moment Rangers have that 1v1 threat with Kent on the left. But Tavernier, for all his quality, isn't going to go by a player like Kent will. Um, so I think that doesn't make it easier for the defence on the right side, but I don't think the threat is equal in terms of how a defender can be beaten. Um, but but because Matondo's not played, it's the same with Davies. Will he be trusted after the international break? I think it will be a Lundstrom, Jack, and maybe a Tillman and Lawrence. Um, at a guess with with Kent off the left, that's probably not I'd, what I'd prefer. I'd like to see Van Bronco shake it up a bit. Um, as I say, maybe do something different to include Matondo. Definitely include try and include Tillman at number ten. I wouldn't be opposed to just going offensive and 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 playing Tillman and Lawrence ahead of. Uh, a Lundstrom, um, but I, I don't know if maybe you know Tillman playing that slightly deeper role gives you enough defensively in a game, um, kind of away from home at Tyne Castle. But that's what Van Bronckhorst did when he first came into to Rangers. He played an offensive midfield and and it worked quite well. Um, ever since he's kind of went back to that that more, more two, two holding players in this game, which which provides that balance. Um, Jack, Jack, I thought looked sharper for Scotland, so I guess that's a, a an improvement um, based on how he started the season. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the players in front of them, now, uh, I'm going with the fact that uh, Tom Lawrence will be fit for this game. Um, now, I'm going to go Scott Arfield, uh, yeah. Tom Lawrence and Ryan Kent uh, with uh, Antonio Cholak leading the line. Um, what do you yeah, say to Arfield's that? A good sh- Arfield's a good shout um, because he kind of is a trusted player. Yeah. Again, you come back to it. Of, it's an, it's a, for me, as much as Arfield is still contributing, and con- especially in the first game, few games of the season, I don't think you should personally be in a position where you're still relying on players um, who have been doing it for so long. And that's why you know the argument of this, the summer transfer window is persistent at the moment. We'll have to see what the team is. Um, 
that's pro- that's maybe the most realistic, uh, t- to be honest, because I don't know if Tillman and, and Lawrence start. I don't know if he, he trusts one of them off the right in this type of game. Um, but that's the shape that Rangers have tended to go with, with that kind of inverted player from the right. Um, but who who going up top? Because I think in a game like you, you saw against Napoli, how Morelos can get you on the pitch. But, yeah, but you I, saw I, against... Cholak's, Cholak's Gio's boy at the moment, isn't he? He is, and he's also he's scored you know, six goals from three expected goals. Yeah. Without him, uh, his clinical finishing, uh, Rangers would be in a... In, in a could be a little bit worse off, let's say, in, in, in my opinion, because the goal threat hasn't been there consistently. I don't think they're going to play both of them together. But then, um, how long do you keep Morelos on the bench for these type of games? You know, because as I say, I, I thought at home against Napoli, you saw with his presence up top, his ability to get something on the ball, even if he's not winning the ball, um, was so influential. And, and if you are under the cosh, I don't think Cholak gets up the pitch in the same way. He's not able to take the ball in, go up the line. So it, it's a it's a bit of a difficult situation, and and they're different, and they contrast one another, which I guess plays into the argument that they could play together. Yeah, um, uh, sorry, uh, did you do you have Tillman in your side for me? I don't have him in. I just think uh, from what I've seen in these sort of high intensity games, which I expect it will be at Tyne Castle, I'm not entirely sure he's at the best option there. Ryan Kent, a lot of comments come in. Listen, Ryan Kent's been off the boil for so long now. I, I, he'd have no complaints, and I'd have no complaints if he was on the bench on Saturday, but I th- just think he's he's uh, like uh, John Lundstrom. He's one of the first names in the team sheet, uh, and, and he's going to play. Um, but Tillman, for you, uh, Joshua, could he be the, the difference maker in the game? I don't think it's likely that Kent's dropped now because why no. would you drop him after an international break when you've had no. two weeks to work with him as opposed to before? Even though I think I think his performances haven't, met, he couldn't probably complain if some if, if he was to spend some time out of the team. Um, Tillman, but then you look at the two PSV games, matches with huge pressure on them. Uh, I, he wasn't great in the home game, but for away from home, I thought he was. You see his quality. He's one of technically he's so good, and and I, I just think that you need to play uh, your best players as as simple as that is, um, and. I don't kind of buy this narrative that he doesn't work hard or he doesn't. I just think he's as he's still adapting, um, but he's going to adapt with games. Uh, to be honest, Derek. Um, but yeah, he, he could not kind of adapt to the Tyne Castle atmosphere, um, etc. But I thought what worked well for Van Bronckhorst the first time he went, and and actually in his first six games in domestic football, when Rangers went away to Easter Roads and Tyne Castle and won. Stephen Gerrard was all kind of about the battle uh, in these games, whether it was Dundee United away and he push a rebo up into the front three, play a, a kind of combative midfield. And I think on occasion, um, you've still just got to treat it as if, OK, we're going to go head to head, see who's better, see who's got the better quality players. Um, and, and and too often, as I say, I think Gerard, especially Tynecastle away from home, it just became such a such a battle, didn't it? Um, especially in those kind of three games in a row where they, where they lost. So I, I'd, I'd be tempted to start Tillman. Um, but as, as, as I say, no more uh, this afternoon when the yeah. press conference has happened. Yeah, uh, and when the teams are announced, uh, it's a tw- it's twelve thirty kickoff. Is it and t- tomorrow? Twelve thirty, yeah, early one yeah. in the capital. So yeah, yeah, so, so yeah. Hopefully Rangers uh, wake up because we know what the uh, in the main the early kickoffs uh, have proven to be problematic. Um, but hopefully Rangers can get get uh, get the job done and come back with uh, a much needed three points. Cannot wait for. Uh, the domestic action uh, to return. I think we'll call it a day there, folks. Uh, a bumper show this morning. Thanks to everyone for, for getting in touch. Uh, really is much appreciated. Just a reminder, uh, we've got that offer on the website. You can see the little ticket below. Just one pound for two months' worth of content. We're practically giving it away. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with your usual uh, videos uh, ahead of the game and after the game. Uh, and then we'll be back on Monday uh, for a proper look back at events at Tynecastle. Uh, but until then, enjoy the rest of your Friday and your weekend.